Can you give me an example, example of um, uh, something that happened that really challenged your relationship, but that ultimately made you stronger as a couple? Oh, God. The, the biggest thing I can say that we really had to deal with was um, the changing of careers. Mm -hmm. My career came to a halt. His career, at the end of his career, it was a challenge yes. for him. But not only was it challenging for him at the time, we were pregnant. Mm -hmm. I was going through postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. I was sick every day. So we were both in our own misery and having to deal with each other. We had to find a way to get through that point because while I'm sitting at home crying over happy things just because anything and everything affected me, he's holding in this pain because he just let go of mm -hmm. something that he had been doing since he was a kid. So we, we had to literally find a way to find each other through that, that murky period. Right. And, and it, that, it, within that transition, you know, like my wife, uh, talked about it's really again fine going back to you and letting go of a lot of old habits a lot yeah. of old coping mechanisms um, of truly transforming inside out because the way I prepared and and got ready to, to play football year in and year out was taken away so I had to replace that with something um, constructive not destructive and oftentimes it happens with ex-players when they leave the game they can't find that, that place that avenue to put that energy and ultimately it affects your relationship with your mate so it's very important that when you are making that transition whatever that may be that you have the proper support there that understands mm -hmm. that and that's why communication is so key in a relationship especially when we got married um, we were tested right off the bat being pregnant changing of careers I mean it was tested off the bat oh, yeah. and you know my behavior as a man going outside of my marriage at times to try to find uh, peace was very construct destructive to our marriage so right. we had to work through those issues as well so there's nothing that my wife doesn't know about me or no, no, she doesn't know she knows my struggles and we worked through those struggles and well, I, want, I want you to help me with that because um, there's so many people dealing with that and I know you know this can be an opportunity to really help yeah. people and so often um, you know women are told you know a man is just you know a man is going to be a man and it's not a man's nature to to be monogamous and there's so much et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. okay so what is the answer here I mean do you buy that is you know I don't how, buy that and how I did you get through it don't. how did you get through it and still maintain your own dignity as a woman and because I'm sure that had to affect your self-esteem you were in a very vulnerable place oh yeah that has to affect trust I mean help me understand all of that I always say my prior relationships prepared me for my husband I've been through the gamut men can be very insensitive at times because they they think with a one track mind at times so I felt like everything that I have been through prepared me for everything that we decided to go through as a couple and when it did happen I'm just like any other woman I hit the roof I'm throwing stuff I'm swinging and, and yes I hit first so thank God I got a man who don't hit back <laughs> but we decided to sit down after after I had cooled off after I had gotten through whatever I felt like he did to me we sat down with the counselor and we went through it step by step and I understood somewhat where he was coming from. I could not understand his pain that he went through with losing his career as far as being a football mm -hmm. player. Right. I understood what I went through when SWV broke up, but I chose a different way. That was how he felt like he could get through it. So I had to understand his mentality and get inside of his mind before I could criticize what he had done, even though it hurt me. But mm -hmm. as a couple in our marriage, I had to be able to get inside him and understand where he was coming from. And because I was able to do that, I was able to forgive him for what he had done. And, so, and, from, a, and from a man's perspective, from my perspective, it, you know, it's a process that you have to go through. You just don't go from, you know, if you're trying to change your, your diet and you're overweight, you just don't go from eating fried chicken to tofu overnight. And it's a process that you go through. And you have to keep in mind there is an end goal at the end of the tunnel. So what I have, what I've learned to do is not so much trying to live for my wife and trying to make her happy. I had to find out what, what my passions were, what makes me happy, and live for my life purpose. 
And that's by really establishing God first as the head mm -hmm. and having him as the filter and then flowing everything through that filter to get it to its purest form and operating from that perspective and taking it one day at a time. So in terms of real tools, I want to know, A, Eddie, what did you do differently um, and um, how did you work to help repair your, your wife's heart? And then Taj, how did you learn to forgive and trust again? Well, for me personally, I had to go back to the source. I had to get my relationship right with God first. I was doing everything right as far as working hard, um, going to school, you know, getting my career back in order, waking up with the kids, doing everything as a father, but I wasn't being my all to my wife. Mm -hmm. You know, I, if, I, if I was 99% of the way there, then I wasn't all the way in. Mm -hmm. You know, I would do things to say things to her just to get her to bluff her. Right. You know, just to make her feel good, whatever, and not being true to that. So I had to really become true about where I was headed in my life. Because I, without me being really, truly honest with her, we weren't going to get, we were always going to be stagnant in the same place. So in order for me to do that, I had, I had to really establish my relationship with God first and not live for her, but live for my life purpose. And by me being truly happy, and content where I'm headed in my life now, then I can be all I can be with her. And then it resonates well with her. Yeah, and, and for me, the process was, it is ongoing because it's always something that will sit in your mind. Mm -hmm. But it's what you do with that. You can, that's where I believe a lot of the, the self-esteem issues come in. When mm -hmm. you let those thoughts corrode your mind to make you believe that you're not good enough. I know I'm a good woman. I know I'm a good mother. I know I'm a good wife. That makes me so strong and confident, even more so conceited to the point that nothing he can do to me can break me down because I know I'm good. And I, you have to learn to forgive. If you have that, that anger inside you that won't let you forgive, you will drive yourself crazy. Mm -hmm. That's how you have all these people mm -hmm. walking around bitter just hating on anything and everything that comes around them because they have so much anger inside them that they don't know how to release. The only way they can release it is by lashing out on the wrong people, right. not the person that did the transgression. I worked it out with him. So nobody else outside our marriage can tell me what to do and how to handle it and how I should feel. Only I can tell myself how to feel, how to handle it, and I have to handle it with the person that did it, not anybody else. Right. So it, it's a process, and women, we, we have to learn how to think for right. us and not for them. Mm -hmm. and, and it's un it's understanding, when you get to this level or this point in your relationship when you can open up and lay everything out on the table, all hands on deck, and you have a, a system that works for you, it just doesn't go automatic. You got to revisit that bad boy right. every minute of because the because isn't it true um, in, that men like to fix things? So once you sort of go through that process, you kind of feel like okay, we talked about it. I said I'm sorry. It should be over. Were you there, or did you understand that it was going to take a while? And she might oh no no, I, I knew it was going to take a minute. Okay. I mean, it, okay. it wasn't like we want to get everything back to uh, square one, and it shouldn't be. Right. You know, it's not going to it's not going to be the same. It, it either it's either going to be enhanced or destroyed. Yeah. Either you work together you to or choose. you move through it. But everybody's going to go through something to challenge their relationship. I mean, the, the, our relationship. Is not considered perfect, but it is perfect for us. It's for us, yes. and and that's how we work on that, on those issues. She knows my struggles. She knows what I go through. She knows what I've been going through, and we work on that consistently every minute of the day. It's, it's just like working out. You've got to continue to work that muscle until it gets stronger, right. until right. until, you, until it becomes a habit. So I mean, in a marriage, because you guys talk about the you know the the power of one. Yes. When you mm -hmm. become one, you're unified. Um, and we know that how important communication is, and you talk about that, and I want to talk about the communication of talking and the communication of sex, like you do in your book. Mm -hmm. So, But when it comes to the communication of talking, you know, in the book you say that you're both talkers. So I guess that helps a lot. You tell. Well, I enjoy that. Well, I know you can talk, because I've interviewed you. <laughs> but it's really refreshing to, to see you talk together and openly. And, so, and that's really the question, though, because uh, how open do you get I mean do you do you tell it all do you feel like you know do you know what your husband can handle do you know what your wife can handle and so 
do you put it all on the table or do you you know just enough just to kind of get through like how much do how far how deep do you really go 